Facebook. Yes, don't run, don't run. Okay, sir. Okay, guys. So, um, this is still our university tour um, in Middlesbrough to side. So, I met a couple of Nigerian students that have decided to oblige, oblige me. Okay, uh -huh, no problem. We'll talk about so African students. Yeah. So, we just want to have a chat with them. What do you guys think about Middlesbrough? So, starting from you. Um, Middlesbrough, um, for me, I don't know, I don't know. The area is cold, developing, Tisai just made it like, um, my home country, Nigeria, made it the present day Ikeja, that kind of feel. Yeah, yeah with the popular yeah, university yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ota, like when Covenant University came in and just made the whole place looking all posh and yeah, so that's just Middlesbrough. Aside from the fact that the sun here is tricky. Carry your winter as, jacket. As it's as always as cold. As it is with the whole of the UK. <laughs> so what do you think about Middlesbrough? Middlesbrough, it has been good for me. Yeah. How long have you been here? Since September. September. Yeah, okay. Middlesbrough has been really good. So um, I've been having fun. It's a safe place. Yeah. I don't know about every every place in Middlesbrough, but at least where I am, TS1 at least, it's a safe, yeah. safe place. Mm -hmm. The honest <laughs> truth, Middlesbrough um, is not an interesting place. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you think about Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough is fun, you know. You love being yeah, Middlesbrough is developing now, okay. entertainment-wise. You see? <laughs> No, 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 I don't really like Middlesbrough, mm -hmm. to be precise, to be honest. Um, I think it's more fun at the neighboring towns. Yeah. It's not that fun here for me. No. Yes, it's just the school life I'm enjoying here, yeah. nothing else. All right, Middlesbrough is good to me. Uh, but just that there are some challenges. Yeah, tell us about mm -hmm. the challenges. Go, 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 mm -hmm. go, go, go. Uh, in the first place, uh, accommodation accommodation is an uh, issue. The whole of Nigerians came uh, last week and this week still finding themselves in A and B uh, with different hotels. And again, uh, the Ozu, the no pure. The job, the job, no pure. The job is challenging, most mainly for students. Very challenging for for students, uh, you know. So those are some of uh, those are the other ones are almost general. Like you wake up in the morning, you have a eight eight degree, uh, eight degree. Eight degree, then by the time you step out of your house, the but window is blowing. <laughs> <laughs> the window will be blowing. Yeah, like this morning, I almost come in. In fact, the breeze almost carried me. So, <laughs> those are some of. Uh, <laughs> so, those are some of the things here. Those are some of the things here. But yeah, mm, thank you. Tell me about tell me about the employment. So we're gonna come back again. So tell me, what do you think about the employment rates here? It's it's challenging. It's very difficult to secure jobs as students here in Middlesbrough. And the rate is very low as compared to neighboring towns. That's what I think about the employment rate. Uh, it's, it's challenging. I think the, the job here is low to the people here. Then most companies, and when you apply, they will tell you, no, oh, we want full-time people, we don't want students. And what do you want we students to do? Because we still have to go to school, we have to, but they say, no, we don't want, we don't want 20 hours, we want, so it's challenging for we students. That's it. It's still the same issue us, they're also having. Give us motivation. The unemployment is, rate is high. Um, you send out your CVs, you send like one million CVs, and you get maybe just two responses. Like, so, Unfortunately, messages. <laughs> then you, yeah, then you get I mean, the rest. Yeah, so I have to even pay yeah, it, it, it gets a time you me. apply, you're already expecting me. Or, I mean, I'm, or not, or I'm not a student, my husband is a student. And the ones that end up calling you asking you if you're if you've lived there for five years or something, or if you can work full time and you can't, you're on student visa. So there's really nothing here yeah, so for students, yeah. Okay. yeah. The employability, the employability rate is like next next to zero. It's terrible. For me, it's terrible because you send you send your CV to probably a company, and they're asking you that do you have 
you have six months UK. Like, mm-hmm. I've worked in this kind of setting for years. Are you asking me if I have six months experience? In the, like, uh, it's really frustrating, especially when you're trying to get, like, professional jobs. You understand? It's really frustrating. And then even the, even the jobs that the you can, job. yeah, the mm-hmm. menial jobs, you see them asking you, um, that are you can you work full-time? I can't work full-time. When I was sending you my CV and everything, I told you I was a student. And you, you're asking me if I can work full-time. It's really frustrating. And sometimes when you're trying to tell them, you know, they say they want people that can work full-time. Even the ones that employ you, they still, you know, the way, they, the way you're treated is not up to par. You understand? It's, it's, for me, it's, it has been frustrating. Getting a job is not even easy. And when you get the job, to even get probably like shifts is difficult because there are limited shifts and there are a lot of people. So it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. A lot of people can't even get jobs, even the millennial jobs. It's really frustrating because coming from where we, we, um, like where we're coming from, you understand. Although that it's not, um, it's not as uh, let's say it's not as terrible or something. Yeah, it's not. It's not yeah, as it's not as terrible as this. But coming here and you think it's going to be better, it's not going to be better. Just know that whatever you see, collect. Just be well prepared. Come here, have enough funds, take care of yourself for if, at least a few months, so that you don't come here and you're stranded. Because once you get here and you're stranded, that's the end. Maybe you carry your bag to the library or on the road and stay like the rest of them that are sleeping on the road. So I believe we should just be prepared and keep sending out CVs. The truth is we can't stop. Keep sending out CVs. We get rejections. Get used to the rejections. This is it's only normal. for students. Yeah, this, this is well. not even just students. Because people even in other schools, schools. No. other I'm, universities like it's not just for okay. me for me, for me my even my friends middles, even my friends are not getting my friends in other school are not really getting the jobs like that it's probably oh, one no, it's but it's not it's 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 yeah i can agree with you it's not it's not that terrible yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's actually the truth is it's a village it's, it's not it's not even about it's a village it's a, it's a it, is it rural is it rural they call it rural area very rural yes even not even the rural area we have in in our own countries, it's not as bad as this because you still you still get a job. Yes, you have to be sincere. Also the next <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> okay, um, asking an international student that do you have three months, six months experience in the UK? For my CV, didn't you go through my CV? I wrote a bit about me in the application letter. Did you read it? Because it's stated there. Like it's stated there. This is it, this is it, this is it. Or you just want to rub it on my face that to my face that I don't have the experience or haven't excuse. stayed. Yeah, or just tell me you're not going to employ me. So uh, for many of us that have left um corporate jobs to come here and um, just for that our education and obviously want to earn more pounds and send back home, it is crazy because how we thought the UK is going to be is not what we are getting. This is what I was at versus what I got. Exactly. I'm coming to Middlesbrough. Um, basically, I think when, when T-Side were building their space here, yeah, they did not. I don't think the community made arrangements for... The expansion. Yes, they did not at all. They did not make arrangements for the expansion because they just see Middlesbrough as a gateway to development. And, and so yes, T side, and they did not even make arrangement for any other thing. If um, for for the care part, if they ask you where where are you staying, I say Middlesbrough, they will be like, um, do you drive? Yeah. I can. I'm like, no, nah. no, I don't drive. Sorry, Sorry. driving is a, is a requirement. Because even they themselves, when you even you say when you check the map, five hours. Six hours, yes. three hours, you need to about three and you hours. start wishing that I wish I had just could in London. Like seriously, I just please. Why am I not in Cambridge? Oh God, Luton. Why am I not there? Why am I here in Middlesbrough? But aside from that, I think the fact that here is just a place for you to rest your head, to start everything. I think aside from that, every every other thing is a turn off. I don't think I'll come here. Again. Um. So generally, I just say, well, when I was coming to the UK. I wasn't expecting everything to come like easy. Do you get? It's not like my father had um, a property here that I'm coming to take over or something. So obviously you are going to have your own challenges as a person. But maybe I didn't expect it to be as vast as this. Do you get? Um, getting accommodation has been a bit a, a hell of a challenge for people. Personally, I didn't experience it, but 
majority of the people I know, uh, they had passed through the challenge of looking for accommodation. Yeah. I got my own accommodation from Nigeria, so maybe I was just one of the few lucky ones she get. But accommodation has been like a bit of headache for everybody. I have friends that came in September and are still squatting up to this moment. Is that especially for people that want to get accommodation as a family? If you are a student, you can still manage to get a room to put yourself. But getting a full house as a family has been a hell of a challenge. Then job-wise, getting job story for another day. I came in in September, and trust me, the job I've been doing, I'm not even proud of it. It was just last week that I was able to secure a better one. You, you honestly don't want to know what I, me that I used to be an Udogu in Nigeria, what I am doing so, to sustain. Now, cut in a, do you regret coming here? Leaving whatever it is you were doing in Nigeria to come here? Well, man, I do not regret it. No. I don't. No. I guess mm -mm. It can only get better, do you understand? Nigeria, tendency of getting better is not certain. Yeah. But here, yeah, the more you do, the more you earn. Do you understand? So, I do not regret. Maybe I have not gotten there yet, but I am you on that path. You will not get there in Jesus' name. Don't say you will Amen. get there. Amen. <laughs> I am on that path, do you understand? So, tendency of getting better is certain. When you do, you earn. Nigeria, you can do, you can do for as long as you want to. And certainty of earning is not there. So, I do not regret coming here. Okay, uh, for me... Uh, let's say, uh, do I regret corporate stress, corporate politics, to come here and um, just do your thing, leave your time, leave when you want to leave and go home? Uh, for me, I was the HR manager for a fintech organization, so oh. leaving there to do media jobs, uh, a bit crazy, but yeah. I don't regret it's a, it. It's a, it's a big gap. Yeah, a big gap. Now, um... The good part was you had your own car. You know, now when you when you get to that level, and you're giving your own car, your own corporate car, and every other thing, so you don't get to face those things. But um, to be very honest, now speaking, I I think we spoke about the fact that employers would ask, like here in the UK, they'll ask you if you have six months experience. Now for for the white collar job, if you have six months experience. Now imagine I stay here for the next six months or next one year or two. I think I'll get to that position. And I'll be earning more than what I actually earned in Nigeria, my home country. So you see that that is my own motivation. And I'm sure a million of us in this country have that thought at the back of our mind. That where I was, I would obviously get better than that. That's the only motivation. That's why we still pull through, despite the weather, despite the difficulty. You come here two, three months, you don't even have a job. The, the house rent is someone's salary for a whole year in your home country. A loan, that house rent a loan. Speaking of bills, imagine when you tell pe people in Nigeria, oh, my house rent is 350 pounds, and they're like, what the? Like, ah, ah, sister, that's my house, that is my salary that you are just paying, just your house rent. And that's not, that, that's not bills. But I've never heard bills inclusive and non bills inclusive. I heard it here. <laughs> that kind of thing. So you see that. For someone earning 500k in Nigeria, uh, I don't think there's a way you can come here without the without actually having been earning a lot. A lot of people were earning a lot. <laughs> For you know the, the problem is because of the um, is it is it inflation? So even the a the lot you are of earning, our of our don't era. say that it's not useless. It's just inflation. The inflation and devaluation. Yeah, so yeah there's general. inflation here, but it's not that bad. Not I wonder if it has been devalued like... Uh, for me, <laughs> I believe it's inflation and depreciation. It's just, it's just what it is. Uh, yes. Ah, I'm learning. Why did I come to school if not to learn? I'm learning. So I feel, I feel, I feel it's that. So, yes, sure, but, but the, the, the aim of coming here is to make it better if you if you can, you understand. So me, I don't really see it like, like I don't see any regrets coming here. Coming here, I get, I got to meet a lot of people. Yeah, that you in fact, I felt then I used to feel like, oh, I'll be boss. I'll be boss. I came here and I found out that I was not a boss or anything. I was keken at pep. Do you understand? <laughs> I was keken at pep everywhere. Like I was just like, wow. I met, I met a lady that was. Uh, yes, I met, I met a lady that was a manager, a top manager in Shell. And she left to come. Insecurity. That was just the problem. And I was like, what are you doing here? 
said that they left everything and came. So you can you can imagine. Even even there's there's one of there's one of my a friend I, I I just got now. He has houses in Nigeria, a lot of houses. Like even while he's here, he's not even working, cause those houses pay everything. You understand? But still insecurity. Insecurity because by the time you t think about it, yeah, they are all blood money people. <laughs> Imagine. So imagine that kind of a situation. Even myself, the way when, when I then if I'm coming, I will. Omo, I can't even see. Say, like, say people don't they watch me. <laughs> so, okay, but so I want to ask one question. Yeah, if Nigeria was a better place, so if the circumstances were different. Would you come there? Uh, uh, sister, why, why are you doing like this? <laughs> you say, as you asked the question, she replied immediately, ah, ah, what most am I doing enough. here? If I'll be coming here, maybe I'm just coming for vacation or for purpose of exposure. Yeah. Which exposure? We are not speaking about the racism. Which exposure? You don't even... Preferential just to you. Preferential treatment. Like, you experience it everywhere you go. Don't do they that pick someone you. who has a better, uh, who has a white color yeah, over yeah. you, even when they know that what you have to what offer is more than that, more than that person. Where I work, for instance, there are most times that you cancel a student shift, a black person shift, just to put someone else, just because of the color difference. Like, do you understand? Preferential treatment is another thing, another headache. There was even a day I had to cry to the manager, and because he felt like I was already getting frustrated, do you understand? Then he had to send that person back, of which the person's name was not even on the rota for that day, she gets. So they asked, they had to cancel my own shift for someone who is not on the rota to come and walk, to come and take my place. Then I was frustrated. I was obviously the only student on ground that day, and he still wanted to send me back. Even after I spent like twice or three times the transportation fee, because I'm the only one, nobody to, you know, um, split with. And you now want to send me back home. So I was really, really angry. I was upset that day. You now had to send that lady back. That since she's not in that she has to go to the house. So stuff like that that we experience. But who are we to complain? I mean, I will leave our papa land. If Nigeria was way better, because to be very, very truthful to you, okay, half of what we do here. Oh, half of everything going on here, it's not even up to what is in Nigeria. Number one, we have to stress ourselves to try to eat all we are not used to. Obviously, something at least you have to try your your friends, their meals, like not just their meals, like try um, other countries' meal and uh, and everything. The fact that we have to stress ourselves, do jobs that we're not used to doing, that we've never done, like never, and every. And ah, uh, an average Nigerian. I used to be a banker. I am packing this. <laughs> Look now, you can imagine. You understand, like, jiggers. it's I crazy. Used to, I used to be a school now. I used to be a school now. Like you can see, it's crazy because if if we all, if they sit all the international students, not just um, um, Africans, if they sit everybody and ask each and every one of us, what were you doing in your home country? Yeah. What are you doing here? Trust me, okay. even T side themselves, even the management themselves will be shocked. Because based on our qualification and experience, oh. we will be so any cool. more than more than um, if, if, even the management themselves you know to be very honest. You know something? You know something? When, I, when I came to Middlesbrough, when I came to Middlesbrough, uh, like October, we went for uh, to a church program. In the morning, and they were after the service, the pastor asked uh, the first time us to wait. And in the reception hall, we were over 40, and he was listening to everybody one after the other. Your profession before leaving Nigeria, and people were saying uh, cyber security, uh, banker. People were saying so. The man was forced to ask that how many brains are left in Nigeria if all these ones are here alone in this service alone. So you get now all of us bringing our expertise to this place in the name of doing masters and then relocation. And, and stuff like that. So he should, at least we should be able to, not all, uh, some of these things we are, I mean, we are, we are open to, because everybody that comes to do masters here, they have been doing well in a profession before coming. Before, coming to this, before coming to this place. So we just come here, then we suggest ourselves to whatever is happening. A lot of people get, got here, and then they discover that, no, no, it's not actually what they have actually, and they could not go back. They have spent millions of naira, and they could not go back. You know, now if you go back to Nigeria after some time, yeah, expectations <laughs> ahead expectations. Uh, um, yeah. Expectations are high, as I said earlier. Most people would have actually preferred to go back to where they are coming from and pick it up from where they stop stopped. She gets, but 
Nigerians generally, even the first day you step your, your foot on this land, you automatically feel you've already come to pack money and they start sending you bills and all of that. So imagine, imagine going back without that status that they have already placed you. They, they, they see you like a failure. Do you get like a momo, like, uh, how can you go there? And then you come back. I heard of a story of a guy that came to the UK and went back like two weeks after that he cannot cope or something. And then, like, the family wrote him off, wrote him off automatically, like, ah, no, this one cannot make it in life again. If you can go to UK and come back in two weeks, uh, it has finished for you. Do you understand? But the story is not always sweet. Do you get Not everybody is going to make it here. That is the bitter truth. Fine, we are, all, we are all trying. But some people are actually bound to make it where they are coming from. So, you are still going to go back to that place you have left. If not for the situation of Nigeria, me personally, I've never, I've never even thought of leaving Nigeria. It has never occurred to me. That I started my traveling process was last, um, I told you now, was last February. It has never occurred to me to leave Nigeria because I feel like, okay, I'm comfortable. I'm not an advocate of, I want to have it big. I just want to live comfortably and, you know, with peace of mind. But with the situation of things, security, securities and everything, they kidnapped my, fr my cousin's friend. Do you understand? And they had to pay three million naira for ransom. Three million naira for ransom within two days. Something they didn't plan for. What if I'm the next person? My neighbor's son was shot when when he was going to school from Lagos to Kwara. They shot him dead. Like and the boy is dead just like that. And I was seeing all of these things happening around me. Obviously, I have to put soup to two now. What's the assurance that I won't be the next target? So I have to save my own head and my family. So basically, that's what I mean. If you want to jackpa, jackpa. My own plan is, my own advice is just make sure you, are, you have your plans. Plan well. Don't just come here with the hope that when you get here, you survive. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. Just have your plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Do you understand? So just make sure you plan every, you have everything planned out. At least for like the first three months. Make sure you can sustain yourself, you can fund yourself for the first three months. Before you can now start opening that hole. By then, I should have gotten a job. By then, I should start getting on my two feet. But jackpa. Jackpa. Don't let anybody tell you that. Yeah, Do, just, yeah. if you have any opportunity to jackpa, jackpa. Pew, vanish. Go. Vanish from that country. When things get better, all of us will go back. For now, we, we've sacrificed enough. Me, I know what I've sacrificed for that country. And I didn't, I didn't get any whatever. So, I, Jackpa. Oh, jackpa. Kaskia. So, guys, it's been nice chatting with all of you. <laughs> so, it's just crying. You know. It's been nice talking to you all. So, Oh yeah, now let's end the video now. Something, what do you something. say to your Nigerians back home? Jackpa, please, Jackpa. Jackpa, with good plans, with good plans. Jackpa, we'll make sure you have good plans. But please, Jackpa. Jackpa. Guys, one more thing. Don't vote for Bala Blue. Don't vote for Blue, Blue, Black. Stand one advice. One advice for Nigerians that are coming, or Africans that are coming. Don't come alone. Because come with your much. spouse. Mm. Number one, Konji. Number two, school fees payment. You cannot earn that money alone. You need someone that's going to be oh supporting you financially. That you guys the are going to that, merge power that together. One be a student and other a dependent, you are cashing out. Don't to come alone, honest. no. Don't try it. If you come alone, who wants to come with me? <laughs> Konji, there is code in the land. <laughs> the land is cold. <laughs> <laughs> the land Welcome. is cold. From the me land to you, is cold. To Jackpa, Jackpa. But, but please, don't, don't come, come alone. alone. Come if with I, your partner. If anybody had told us, would you have come alone? My dear, let's get married. Let's get married. 11,000 people will see this. Uh -uh. <laughs> I got you. <laughs>